What's up everybody? Welcome to the Charcoal King. So today, the whole idea is potatoes on the flat top grill. Now we're gonna do it two ways and I'm gonna show you this easiest secret way possible. Stay tuned. All right guys, so today we're gonna to put the potatoes on the flat top. And I've done something a little bit different that might just help you guys go a long way. Instead of just use, using raw potatoes or buying like the dehydrated kind that you gotta soak in water, or even if you take a regular raw potato and you gotta grate it and soak it and strain it and squeeze it and all that nonsense, hey, bake your potato beforehand. Yeah, just bake it. That's all you gotta do. Bake your potato. This bad boy's already baked. Half baked. No, I'm kidding. It's baked. All right. So this is what we do. See, a lot of times we have steaks, right? So we'll cook steaks out. We'll have baked potatoes as a family. And then let's say we have an extra potato because somebody didn't eat it or somebody didn't want it. Well, what happened is we started doing these like skillet combinations where we'd take leftover steak, we'd take leftover uh, grilled kebab vegetables, leftover potatoes, mix it all up, put it on the flat top, add some eggs over it. And oh, mm, so it got me thinking, why don't we share what we do like basically at home with you guys about how we do the potatoes and how easy it can be. So these bad boys have already been baked. Now it doesn't matter what you put on potato. I mean, you could put peppers, jalapenos, onions, the list goes on and on, mushrooms. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Waffle House or IHOP, whatever. I mean, you can have your potatoes any way you want to. But to me, this is a foolproof way to get basically like a hash brown or like a scattered and chunk potato on your flat top. Let's get started. Our first method is gonna be the grater method. Now remember, we've already baked the potatoes, which is why it's such a secret. Nobody does it. So the whole point is, I don't even take the skin off of them because when you grate it, nine times out of 10, the skin just separates from it naturally. Uh, quick tip, when you're doing potato, try not to take it to where it's like so soft and, and just like that perfect baked potato. You want it to where when you touch it, you're like, man, it could go for a couple more minutes because remember, we're gonna cook it again, so you don't want it just deteriorating on you. So here we go. Look at that, easy, easy hash browns. But this is what you're left with, watch this. Look at that, nice fluffy shredded hash browns. All right, so like I said, potatoes two ways. So this is gonna be one of the ways. We got a little ghee here. I don't know if you guys use this at home, but I'd highly recommend it. All it is is clarified butter. It has a very, very, very high smoke point. Seems like a lot, but you want a lot. You want those hash browns to get that nice crispy crust on the bottom of them. The biggest thing about hash browns, guys, is two things. One, don't touch it, and two, is when you put your hash browns on the flat top, don't make the area so big to where your spatula can't flip it. It's funny, you see people do hash browns and then they get upset because they can't flip the whole thing at once. Well, remember your spatula is only a couple inches wide. So when you've got a disc the size of 12 inches of hash browns and you try to flip it with one, no bueno. All right, here we go. You can go as thick or as thin as you want. It's not gonna matter. Remember your hash browns are already cooked. And just like that, you got yourself a nice mound of hash browns. Now, if you want to salt and pepper these at this time, that would be a good idea. We're gonna let those cook and we're gonna come back over here. Question though, if people don't have ghee, because ghee is kind of expensive, Ghee. Well, the reason why I like ghee is because it has a very, very high smoke point. Okay. So we could use. Oh, you like can use anything. Oil. Butter, oil. Typically, a high heat oil, especially on a on a on a flat top like this. The reason why the flat top itself is so versatile and so great is because it has so much of a surface area. If you're at home right now, and you're trying to do these like in a cast iron skillet or something like that, you could probably only do one good portion of hash browns per time because the skillets just aren't big enough. Well. 
Here is a little bit different. The surface area is so big where it's able to accommodate more food. So when you're using a high heat oil like this, you're not worried about it burning or um, uh, changing the flavor and stuff like that on your flat top because it can handle the high heat. If you use something like butter or something like olive oil that's got a lower smoke point and you try to put a lot of oil on here, you gotta see how it's smoking. This is actually good for the griddle. This is like basically seasoning in the process of while you're cooking. So there's no harm, no foul. You put olive oil or just straight butter on here, there's so much surface area that you're not using that that's when it becomes a problem. It burns, you don't want it to burn. All right, like I said, just leave it alone. You guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see these little crusties getting on the bottom. I'm gonna be pretty close and ready to flip. It doesn't take long. Like I said, we're gonna do hash browns two ways. It might seem like a lot, but you want that crispy, that crispy exterior. And that's what you work. That's why you bake it ahead of time. It doesn't take three days to cook on the flat top. Look at that. over here to where the, the fun really happens potato so like I said this is basically just a leftover baked potato from the night before and we're just going to do a simple easy dice now you could definitely do this raw it just takes more time So we got the hash browns on this side, and now it's for potato number duh. All right, so we got that's some French for because people usually say dos, but well, we took French in high school. Duh, duh, duh. All right, so oh, we got. Right. You yeah. remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. All right, so we got the bell peppers, we got a little jalapeno, we got some onion, and our chunk potatoes. Now this is where the optional comes into play. All I did was pound out some filet right here. I'm gonna use that for mine. My wife's gonna get a little uh, couple of filet medallions because we love steak with our potatoes. But other than that, we're just gonna put it on the grill because that's what we like to eat in the morning. We're gonna offset a little bit. All right, for me, all I'm doing, look, hey, I pounded these little filet medallions out super, super, super thin, season my flour. And this is gonna be like country fried steak on the flat top grill, along with potatoes. And we got a little cream gravy that I made earlier from like beef drippings and from um, uh, bacon and um, sausage fat that I've rendered out and strained and saved. <laughs> Ooh, that crust. Like I said, I'm not really going to go into detail about these two, just because I feel like it's uh, basically irrelevant. This is just what we're having in the morning. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so the super easy hash browns are done. All I'm going to do, show you guys how crispy they came up. They're light and fluffy. Mm, look at that! Look at that crunch. I don't know about you guys, but I love that dang crunch. But it's all about cooking the potato a little bit ahead of time. So we got that removed from the grill. We're gonna decorate those in a minute. But I'm gonna show you guys a little secret. Don't do it because I'll be doing it. Let me get my bowl. We're gonna take our diced potatoes. It doesn't matter if you got a couple onions in there. Now, a little bit, what we're about to do, a little of this goes a long way. But you talking about a crunch factor. Remember that flour that we use to dredge our beef? Just a touch. I mean, just a touch. Take our potatoes, toss them. And there we go. Oh, yeah. Move those off the heat. Still got tons of flavor, tons of... Woo. 
right, here we go. We're gonna let the potatoes get on the surface first before we add our vegetables. Okay, that's gonna help. That's gonna help get that crust, and that's what we're looking for with these potatoes. All right, here we go. Here's where the fun happens. I don't know if you guys can smell it. Oh, God, this is gonna be good. Mm. A little S and P on there, you're gonna be good to go. Let those potatoes go. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm just gonna move all that fat and all that flavor right over to the potatoes. Okay. I know it seems like today we're a little scatterbrained, but the whole point, basically. Is first of all, you can add whatever you want to the flat top. Second of all, you have so much surface area that it's a great way to incorporate more things than just like an ascender skillet. And the third thing is baking your potato ahead of time. Just use it as left a refrigerator overnight. You can come out, you don't have to worry about cooking all day. There we go. There we go. God, you can smell it. You guys ever go to like a uh, Resorts. I wouldn't even say resort. What would uh, amusement park? And they got those like sausage and potatoes on the that forty-eight inch dang big disc, and it just sm you can smell it from I don't know two miles away because of the way the wind goes. Oh, this is it right here. This is absolutely it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So we're gonna get these bad boys going. Come over here a little bit, honey. With all this mess we got going on. Let's show them this filet right here. Oh, yeah. So this is what we like to do. I don't know if that's even going to make it to the plate. I might just eat that right now as an appetizer. It's so dang tender. I guess that's why they call it oh, tender loin. Oh, ma'am. That's good. Now look, now you can use this with sirloin. That's good. <laughs> What this tastes like. Mm. Here's mommy's no fried version. Mm. There's daddy's country fried version. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Which one's better? It, I think, I mean, you, it's two different things of beef. I mean, cut me a piece of yours. This has the crust. I mean, look how, even though it's overcooked on a filet, mm. it's that country fried feel. It's got a little bit of pepper, salt in it, oh, it's heavily good. seasoned. But it retains that moisture. Mm. Look at these brown bits. This is what I'm talking about. This is why you just, I mean, I mean, just like a tablespoon of flour, maybe even less for a whole potato. Did you guys see that color? Now this is live, this is cooking at you almost live. And you guys can tell the potatoes are already done. The vegetables are getting nice and done. We're about to plate these up with a little cheese. And mm. the, oh, this, the eggs. The eggs. Eggs, you can have no breakfast potato without eggs. Right Get back. After eggs. these messages, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're that close. I know it's a lot of uh, chaotic things going on, but the whole review of this was potatoes on the flat top. Don't let anything else distract you, whether we do the filet, the vegetables. Two ways shredded, already baked and chunked already baked. And I'm telling you, your life will be so much easier. But let's get going. Do a couple eggs. Have a little avocado oil. We turn our griddle way down. Get it back down in its simplest form. Good looking egg. I think we'll do four of them. Two for me, two for her. Okay. The whole point of this video basically is to get you guys comfortable with the idea that the camp chef is just so versatile. I mean, regardless what you put on it, 
I mean, to get technical, this could have been like three or four different videos. Look, I'm keeping something warm on the side. This side's off and the plate is so hot. It's keeping my green cream gravy uh, warm. We did country fried steak on the flat top. We did potatoes on the flat top. We and did hash browns on the flat top. That country fried steak literally took like oh, five seconds. minutes. Well, it's, was, I guess it's not technically fried. It's more like country griddled steak. <laughs> That's true. Oh yeah. Let our eggs go. I'm gonna just take our country fried steak. The only reason I'm doing this is because it's to warm it up just a hair. I don't want to overcook my wife's steak, so I'm just gonna fold that in there. Mmm. Hey, if you guys want to comment below what kind of recipes you want to put on the Camp Chef. I'd love to hear it. I think we're one of the next videos we're gonna do is a Mexican like taco burger. We're gonna like season the meat, have like a smash style burger. So if you guys wanna see any recipes or something like that, just let me know. We'll try to accommodate as many as possible. All right, here we go. We are so close to being done. Let's go ahead and plate yours up. Yep. Hey, make sure you get me all that filet now. That's what I love about coming out here and cooking. Now that the weather has cooled down a little bit, you know, it's not like you have to worry about, golly, you want to eat all that? No. That's going to be breakfast for like the next three days. Honey. <laughs> that's <gonna> honey. <laughs> that's a lot. Don't fool yourself. Mm. I'm going to eat all that steak out of there, though. Look at that. Nice little shred of cheese. And oh, all yeah. that's gonna melt. Did we mention this is just like a Wednesday breakfast for us? Well, we <laughs> I'm off on Wednesday, so I really enjoy my Wednesday breakfasts. <laughs> probably more than most. All right, eggs are probably done. Mmm. And this is probably like breakfast and lunch. <laughs> Honey. We're having a salad for dinner. No, we're not. Look at there. We should. Now, look. now, if that's not potatoes on the grill, I don't know what it is. You could substitute sausage. You could substitute bacon. And you could substitute mm. anything you want to. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Mm. All right, guys. All I did. Oh, you're having the shredded. I'm having the shredded. I got that country fried steak. Don't do me like that, Daddy. Don't do me like that. Oh, all over it. Mm. <laughs> oh, Daddy. Mm. Now, let me tell you. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> right here. A little S&P. Mm. I'm gonna hold off on the cheese. I'm gonna dye it. Yeah. Mm. His and hers. Here, just because I wanted to start eating my greens. Little parsley. You're yeah, gonna pick parsley off right there. You're gonna pick that off later. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's it. The final point. Regardless of how chaotic it might have looked, we bring you potatoes two ways. And what other ingredients you decide to put in there? Just make sure you put love and your favorite ingredients in there and it's a foolproof method. So without further ado, from the charcoal king to the camp chef to the microwave queen, let's see what we got going on. Mm, country fried steak, Golly. hash browns. You don't even know where to start. Oh, I do, in my belly. We should do before and after what this place gonna look like before. You can eat all that for breakfast? What's for lunch? <laughs> Mm. Oh, yeah. This is a two forker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I won't even I won't even ask you cuz I mean, that just looks good. Mm. Let's try yours. Hi, huh, you eating mine? Oh yeah. They want to know what both of them taste like. You're holding the camera. Hey, this is talent. Watch that. That egg. 
just oh just drips all in down the potato the crunchy potatoes mm. a filet a little melted cheese some peppers and some of that oh Who's is better, mine or yours? <laughs> yours. <laughs> I love the jalapeno pepper. You should the put veggies cheese. in yours. This I'm is, on a diet. This is your veggie. It's I'm on a diet. <laughs> hey, press that subscribe button and pound that notification button. And if you can, share this video because I'm telling you, we're moving on up. Peace. Dude, east side. Damn, can we let do like half and half? Uh-uh. I don't want, I don't want gravy all over mine. Are you kidding me? Mm. Oh, this needs to be like a Monday through Sunday thing. And that country fried steak? Man. Mm. Yours is banging.